Roll out those crazy, lazy, hazy days of summer. Welcome back, you vegetastic people. Behold, before your very eyes. What do we have here? We have the prototype of the Happy Days Veg Aeroponics Grow Tower System. Now, before we get into it too deeply, because I don't know how long this video is gonna be and I don't wanna bore anybody who's not interested in this video, because I know this is not everybody's thing or everybody's cup of tea. And talking of cups of tea, get yourself a brew, strap yourself in, could be a long one. And you know the rules, no tea, no work. Ah, stunning. So, my last video, I was in the shed on my whiteboard discussing how I plan, or how I hope to plan, on how to make this aeroponics grow tower. Now, I did explain in the video that I've wanted to make one for ages, but I haven't made one. This is gonna be the first one, and it's all R&D, research and development. There's gonna be mistakes, there's gonna be things that you could have always done better, because, you know, Nine times out of ten, you can always do things better, but, it, you know, hindsight is a wonderful gift if you could have it up front. And I can't remember who commented, but they had various questions. So, I just want to run through a couple of those questions first and get it cleared up before I go into the nitty-gritty details of this. So let me put my glasses on. Now I mentioned that at the time I could only find, because I was rushing, that's my own fault, that I could only find a, a time clock that's got 15 minutes increments on. And I did say that that was too long. I don't need that water running for 15 minutes. I did say that. I stressed that this time clock isn't the correct type. So, in fact, you can hear it ticking because it's an old, it's a, even though it's brand new, it's like an analog one. So I've done my research and sometime today I've got a new timer being delivered, a cycle timer that is that has got multitude of settings and uh, on and offs and it's called a cycle timer. So that's that. But just for demonstration purposes to get it all working, this is what I've been using. Alongside a little 12 volt dimmer. And all of this at the moment is connected to a little spare battery that I keep spare for jump starting things just in case. So that's that. So I know 15 minutes is too long. The plan is to have the water running. Excuse me, get rid of that cable. The plan is when it's running, when it's in position and it's running, to have the water running for no more than five minutes. And then it's going to go off for half hour and then it's gonna come on for five minutes. Like that, 24 hours a day. So that's the first point. Another question was, how am I gonna start, because this is primarily this year for salad plants, how am I gonna start my seeds off? I'm gonna start my seeds off the conventional way, in a tray, broadly sown in a row, in a seed tray, and then when they grow to a manageable size, I'm gonna take them out, wash any dirt or compost off the roots and then place them in this grow grow tube. Now I've already got some plants that I'm hoping are more than big enough to go in here this, this weekend, yeah? So that's how I'm gonna start my uh, plants off. Another question was, how am I gonna hold the plants in? Well, I've got some of this foam pipe insulation that will fit into these little pockets here, yeah? Now, if this particular size isn't, because I'm, I'm, I was governed by what size I could get my, my hands on. If, that's too, if the hole in there is too big, yeah, then I would just put a little tie wrap in there or a piece of garden string in there just to hold it in until I can get a more suitable type of sponge. 
but that sponge will be in there holding the planting. There's gonna be no, no, no growing medium, no dirt, no cocoa, core, no compost, no nothing. Right, so that's how I'm gonna hold the planting, yeah? So as I say, this is my first one I've built, yeah? So, you know, I'd hope you'd, you'd cut me a bit of slack. So where were we? Right. Let's start off from the bottom and work our way up. The idea is you have a reservoir of water that's got some plant feeding. And the water is to be pumped from this reservoir up into the top. Oh, that was it. They said, uh, I don't think a shower head is gonna be big enough to spray the water down the sides of the pipes. Well, I said a shower head for ease of explanation, but what it actually is, it's a, a proper rose off a watering can, yeah, which works perfectly. So that was another question. I hope that clears that up. So the pump, the idea is the pump is to pump water from the bottom of the reservoir or out the res reservoir, up a tube into the top where the water's sprayed out in all directions and the water falls down the pipe splashing on all the roots giving the roots of the plant uh, the roots of the plants all the moisture and feed they need when all the water dribble falls back down through the pipe back into the sump and then it's a constant cycle now i'm not saying this is completely going to be completely airtight because it isn't but it will create a moist humid damp environment in this tube that the plants can draw moisture out the damp air in the half hour that the machine is not running. And I say half hour, I haven't tested it yet. Tested it yet. I've got to look into it and see all these timings if it's okay. But I don't need to run it for any more than five minutes. By that time, all the roots will be completely saturated. So I've got this big blue container. Now you'll, you'll recognize these containers because these are the ones I bought four years ago in preparation to cut them down to grow my potatoes in. But I had about half a dozen of them which were blue, which I kept for other projects. I think I've got, counting this one, I think I've got a total of four that I've got leads. So I could have a total of four of these if I want. So, I've got all pictures of these, of these, settings, uh, fittings and bits and bobs. So I put all the pictures up on this side. That's why at the moment I'm on this side of the film, the screen, because I'm leaving this side ready for all the pictures. So how does the water get in there? Here is, I've drilled a hole and in there is a little float valve and all the pictures will be up on the screen. It's the same type of float valve I use in my self-watering system in the polytunnel. I've got to order another one in now because this is the spare, always carry the spare. So I've got to order an another one in, but there's a little float valve in there. And that goes up and down, and it's got a, 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 a motion of 50, uh, two, two inches, 50 mil. The water level could go up and down 50 mil as the water tops itself back up and, and, uh, and replenishes the, the, the reservoir of water in there. Now that is connected from Imagine this is the pipe connected to my rainwater system and all my rainwater comes off the roof of this shed, yeah? Comes down there and your hose will just click onto there. So provided you've got water in your rainwater harvesting system, you don't have to worry about this running dry. Now I don't know how long it'll take to use the 56 litres of water, that's accurate, the 56 litres of water that is going to be in that tank. I don't know how long them plants will take to soak that up. That is why you always want to have it connected to a, a, to a, a water source so you know that if it does run dry, it's going to be replenished with uh, fresh rainwater. Also, one thing you have to make a note of is that these float valves are designed for low pressure yeah for gravity they, it, they're not designed to put your hose pipe on connected to your mains water if you do that it's just too powerful and it'll just push the water through regardless and it will just overflow so bear that in mind so that's how the water gets in and then 
connected, connected in this. This is, I've done it this way because this is what I just had it to hand. I didn't have a little proper junction box. But that's going to be replaced by uh, a waterproof uh, little plug and socket. Because this is running off a 12 volt DC battery. On the bottom of that white cable in there, there is a small water pump that is used in caravans, motorhomes, uh, RV vehicles. It's a 12 volt pump. I don't know how much it, I don't know what the the flow rate per minute or hour is because it's an old pump I've had it years. But just for a singular tube, the pump is too powerful, but notwithstanding, it's, it is what I had. It is what I had. God, Sean, you need to learn some proper English. And then that pump is held in position three or four inches off the bottom of this tank. So if there's any debris that goes into the bottom of the tank, which inevitably there will be, bits of root and whatever dropping in, the pump isn't going to get clogged up in the bottom with any debris. So it's three or four inches off the bottom of the tank. And it's held at that position by this, what we call in the UK, what I've always called a stuffing gland. It's a cable gland. You drill a hole, a 20 mil hole in your, in your, in your tank or in your box or whatever you're fitting it in. Tight the, the lock nut on it, and then uh, I'll put a picture up on the screen, and then you put your cable through, tie it up, and it keeps it tight, watertight, and it also helps stop the cable being pulled out. I've got the same kind of fitting, but a bigger one, on this 3 8 braided hose, which is the water supply coming from the pump up, and that also helps keep the pump in its position at the right height. So that's just like belts and braces, really. And then on the other end of this pipe, because eventually this pipe, this pipe is going to be just tie wrapped to the side like so when I get it in its final position. On the end of there, I'll put a picture up. It's connected with another stuffing gland through the cap. The cap's removed, the top and the cap is removable for maintenance and repairs and service. And it's connected to a garden watering can plastic rose which is like a shower head and it's, it pushes the water out to the side and vertical in all directions making sure that water's been sprayed in that pipe all over yeah perfect so when you put power onto the pump it comes on the pump sucks water up out the bottom it pushes the water up up this pipe into the rose shower head at the top and all the water trickles down and re whatever's not soaked up by the plants returns into the bottom of the sump for recycling now you'll see how i've made these holes in this pipe what i've done you can't see inside there i've made two big indentations I've got two holes I heated up with it with the uh, heat gun and then I made two indentations like this but a lot bigger so when the water comes down from the top it hits those and it splashes out and it agitates the water and it helps cr mix the water and the oxygen together uh, to, to give you a, a nice aerated oxygen filled water or well, that's the thinking so that's that. Now, obviously, I've got this standing on this trolley because it saves me bending down with me bad back and me bad knees. So, let's get onto the pipe. This is a piece of four inch underground pipe. In an ideal world, I would have liked the pipe to have been bigger and white in colour. White so it reflects the, the, the sun. But notwithstanding, that's a a little incidental it's it's you know it's neither here nor there so i decided that to have three holes would work perfectly on this size of pipe using this size of plastic pipe which 
it, I think it's 40 mil outside diameter. Uh, I'll put a picture up, yeah, on the screen, hopefully. It just worked, it, in my opinion, it worked out perfectly. So what I did, I put a row of three there, and then the, 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 the row of three above it has turned round, so you'll see that that one is in the middle of that those two. And then up here, it's in the middle there. So when the water drops off the bottom of that one, the water can drop down and drop onto that one, and, on, and, and so forth, yeah? Or that's the theory. And it seems to be, it seems to be working fine. Because I'm getting nice, even though there's no plants in there, I'm getting nice water dispersion. So how do we make the little slots in there? Basically, you measure the size of the pipe you're putting in, in our case 40 mil. So I just measured, I measured a, a, a slot. I put a line across there, 40 mil wide, and then I cut it with, you could cut it with an axe or but I cut it with a, a, a cordless grinder, hand grinder. You heat it up, with a hot air gun until it's pliable and then you force the piece of pipe in until you get the shape you want and then I sprayed it with cold water just to shock it back into sh shape you know so it, it, it goes rigid again it's a bit time consuming but you need to measure it mark it double check it before you start cutting and this has enabled me to I always just looked at how big some of my lettuce plants of growing in the garden and I'm thinking right if a lettuce plant grows that big yeah that big that big that big that big you know that should be you won't sh what boy right you shouldn't be able to see that pipe once all the plants are fully grown but the beauty of this is you don't have to use all the holes at the same time you can use half of them while you're starting off another lot of salad plants in the polyton or the greenhouse or on the kitchen windowsill ready to replace when the old ones are used you can put younger fresh plants in or oh, that's the idea so that's that that's the holes so excuse me while well, i finish off my brew now i wasn't planning initially i wasn't planning on gluing in any of these pieces of pipe. But because of the shape of the hole, the nature of the beast, it, water was still dribbling out. So I decided that it'd be prudent and beneficial and just easier all round if I was to silicone in with food grade silicon sealant, by the way. This is okay for food, this pipe's okay for food, and this silicon sealant, it's, this stuff is very expensive. I could have got some cheaper, but that means I would have had to go out and buy some more. So I thought, I've got something that'll do it, and it is food safe. So I've, de I've decided to silicon them in, so that way there's no water dribbling down, whether you've got a plant in there or not. And now I've got seven rows. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, I've got seven rows of three, which is 21 plants. So in this particular tower i've got the ability to grow up up to uh 21 plants at any one given time now this pipe is sitting on the bottom of this barrel there are holes in there for the water to come out so it's not going to obstruct the water and in fact, the bottom of that barrel has got a ridge in it and it's sitting on that ridge. So there's plenty of room for the water to circulate. But what I had to do here, I had to put some inside there, some little brackets and bolt a, a, a 90 degree L bracket through the lid and through the side of the pipe just to give it some rigidity. Now, it's not rock solid because this is not as tight as it should be. When I tighten this lid up tighter, it'll take out the ability for this vertical tube to move. And the reason I've done this is because you need to be able to take this out for cleaning and maintenance and any future breakdowns or service work or anything like that, yeah? So you'd be able to just take the top cap off, which just pulls off, unscrew that and lift that out, and then you'll get access to the, to the pump, to the float switch and so on. 
Now, I think that's nearly covered everything. So, as I say, with the price of electricity, I want people to be able to try something like this and be able to use it off grid. Hence the reason at the moment I've got it running off of just a, a, a small battery through a timer and through a, a dimmer. Now the plan is I've got a big brand new leisure battery, uh, 150 amp hours I think it is. Now the plan is this, I was going to have it being charged by solar, but the problem is with solar, you'd get no solar on the dull days and it'd be using more electricity than a, a, than the solar panel could create on a dull day, on an overcast day, let alone night time because this is running 24 seven. So I've decided to, to go down the route, maybe not this year, but for next year, to buy a small wind turbine because there's one thing I'm not sure of here in North Wales is wind. There's, all, there's always a breeze. So I'm gonna have a, a, a wind turbine on the side of the polytunnel that can turn around with the direction of the wind, going through a, a, a charging modulation device, which is also connected to a solar panel. So in the summer, when you have those hot still days when there's not a lot of wind, the sun will charge the battery through the solar panel. And then on a day like today, when it's slightly overcast, you'll still get solar power, but the wind will also generate electricity and charge your, charge your leisure battery. Also that way, that will be able to give me, uh, I'll be able to plug my radio in, be able to charge my phone, yep. And I'll also have power just in case I want to use any other little uh, irrigation pump or anything like that. So I think that's, I think that's covered all the basics if there's any other questions uh, or queries, or you're thinking of making something like this, yeah, let me know. Because I, I love do, you know, I love doing the projects. And B, uh, I think it's going to be a good idea uh, for salads. And also, you, you, you're not using much space. You know, you're using the vertical space that is wasted, especially in greenhouses and polytunnels. If this works well this year. I'm going to go mega all out for a bigger system in the polytunnel for salads and strawberry plants. And I'll, I'll try some other, I'll try some other plants. I'll experiment. Yeah. So there's only one thing to do. Let's turn the bad boy on. Now, I don't know whether you can hear that. That pump is probably running at, oh, I'd say, well, let's turn it up, let's turn it up maximum. You've just got to give it a little bit of time because basically what happens is when this pipe fills up with water, when the pump goes off, the weight of the water pulls itself back down and pushes itself back through the pump. So you have to give it let it run for half a minute or so, just to expel all the air out the pipe. Now that's running. That's running at full capacity, which is which is fine. But I don't need it running at full capacity. I think fifty percent capacity of whatever that capacity is, because I don't know. It's not written on the pump. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, 50%. And that's the beauty with a 12 volt DC pump. You can adjust the voltage to, to decrease and increase it and have speed control, which is the same principle I, I did on my uh, compost and soil sieve. And that's basically it. All that's, left for, all that's left for me to do is to wait for the other timer to come and wire up and set up the other timer and then get 
get it in position. Obviously, it needs to be on a flat surface, and you know from watching my other videos that the floor in my polytunnel isn't flat. So I'm gonna to have to get a small wooden stand or something and create a small flat base for it to stand on. But that is, uh, is the Happy Days Veg vertical aeroponics prototype. Easy for you to say, pot pickers. And I don't mind saying, I'm over the moon with that. I'm over the moon. And all I'm going to use in there as plant food is homemade nettle tea, horse tea, and comfrey tea. Job done. Let me know what you think. Happy days, time for another brew. Man's a genius in his own lifetime. <laughs>